Welcome to the Andrew Lavery Show where we talk about investing in the stock market. In this video, we're going to take a look at 3M and see if they're a good investment or not. I'm going to walk you through everything that I look at. If I was decide if I was considering making an investment in 3M, I'm going to show you everything I look at, all the numbers and percentages, why I look at them, really go into all that. And at the end of the video, if you stick around long enough, I will tell you if I would invest in 3M based on everything that we see here in this video and also at the end. I'll let you know if I think the current share price of $187.89, if I think that's a fair share price or not. And I'll show you how I determine what a fair share price is for the company. Before we move on, I want to encourage everyone to hit that like button. Don't forget the subscribe button, notification bell. I post new videos as often as I can. All right, so let's dive in now and into this actual analysis. The first thing I look at for any company, I am a dividend investor. I love getting paid those dividends from the company. So... I always look to see, does the company pay a dividend? And you can see right here on Yahoo Finance, we're on the summary tab, and look at for dividend and yield. And you can see, yes, they do pay a dividend. Happens to be $5.92 per year per share, which comes out to almost 3.2% of the current share price. That's where that percentage comes from. So you can say, yes, 3M does pay their investors a dividend, their shareholders a dividend, <clears throat> but... Um, I like to get a little more history on that dividend. So what I do is I come to dividend.com. The first thing I look for is I want a company in my port. I want companies in my portfolio that that pay dividends. Yes, but I also want companies that increase their dividends at least once a year. And I want to see a company do that. You know, increase their dividends for at least ten consecutive years before you know I really consider um, putting them in my portfolio. I have gone against that a little bit from time to time. However. Um, really 10 years is the benchmark that I look for. And you can see here we're on dividend.com. We're already on 3M's page. Scroll down just a little bit. You can see right here, consecutive years of dividend increase. And you can see, yes, 3M has been increasing dividends for 59 years. So obviously well beyond the 10 years that I like this, you know, the minimum that I like to see of 10 years. So now that we know that, I like to come down. It's great that they're increasing their dividend, but by how much are they increasing their dividend um, enough to keep pace at the very least keep pace with inflation so you can see here we came down to the the um, payout history this 3m's right here if you're not familiar 3m uh, each company that's publicly traded on the stock market has what's called a ticker symbol or a stock symbol 3m company just happens to have 3m's for their stock symbol so um, come down to the payout history I don't think I told you. Um, click view all payout history right here. And what I like to do, um, if the company has a long enough dividend history, which 3M does, I'll come down pretty far. I'll come down around the mid 90s. Let's say 1996 right here. And I'll take, I'll just note what the yearly dividend was for a single share, which happened to be 96 cents back in the year 1996. So what I'll do is I'll come over to usinflationcalculator.com. I'll plug in the start year of 1996, and we got 0.96 for the dividend, and i go ahead and hit calculate. So just to keep pace with inflation, 3M would have to be paying a dividend. since Keep pace with inflation since 1996, 3M would have to pay a dividend of $1.67 per year per share. But we saw on Yahoo Finance, they're paying $5.92 per year per share. So way outpacing inflation by a mile so that's awesome i'd definitely like to see that i do one i take one more sample i'll do something a little more closer to the current year maybe you just you can just pick a year whatever you want i will say 2016 2016 so they paid four dollars and 44 cents for that entire year for a share uh so come back up here oops two zero one six Four and calculate. So since 2016, just to keep pace with inflation, they had to pay five dollars five cents per year per share. But like we said earlier, they're paying five dollars and ninety two cents. So they are outpacing inflation. The reason why this is important to me is because right now I'm a young guy, um, coming up on 40 years old. So I still got plenty of time to go before retirement. So what I'm doing is taking all the dividends that my portfolio pays me and reinvesting that back into my portfolio to help grow it faster. I put money in every two weeks when I get paid. 
but then I also take the dividend money and use that to buy more shares as well so I can grow my portfolio even faster. But when I retire, I'm going to stop using that. I'm not going to reinvest that dividend income. I'm going to use that dividend income to live off of. My wife and I will go on vacations and pay our bills and go to the grocery store and go to restaurants. Everything that we do now, but we'll be using dividend income as opposed to the income from our jobs that we have. Because we'll be retired. We won't have jobs. So I want to make sure that the dividend increases keep pace with inflation at the very least. That way my purchasing power in the future, 25, 20, 25 years or so down the road, the inflation will not eat away at my purchasing power down the road. Um, so that's why I like to make sure these companies are at the very least keeping pace with inflation with regards to their dividend increases. But as you can see here, 3M is outpacing inflation, which is obviously way, way better than just keeping pace with it. So, um, yep, that's, that's, it's always something that I keep track of and, uh, you know, I'd like to make sure that they're doing. All right, so now we got some good dividend history. Yes, they pay a dividend. Yes, they've been increasing their dividends every year, like clockwork, for nearly 60 years, coming up on 60 years. And their dividend increases are outpacing inflation. So fantastic. That's the dividend history that I look for. Come back to Yahoo Finance. I go over to statistics. Click that. And scroll down just a little bit here. You can see the most recent quarter that we're looking at. All these numbers are as of June 30th, 2021. That's the most recent quarter. If you're not familiar with companies that are publicly traded, what they have to do by law is report their financials, their income statement, cash flow, balance sheet, all those numbers. They have to report them once every three months to the Federal um, the Securities and Exchange Commission. And then that information from there will go public to, for anyone to see. It's not just investors of the company, but anyone who wants to see it can, can see it. So that's why we're this way you can look these numbers up and they're as of June 30th. Three months from now, we'll see some new numbers. Well, three months from this date, we'll see numbers ending as of September 30th or 31st, however many days are in September. So first thing I'm looking for here is profitability. And I'm looking at profit margin and operating margin. I want to make sure that these percentages right here, these percentages are always positive. Negative percentages are very, very bad. The reason why I want positive percentages here is because I want to make sure a company spends less money to run the business and invest in the business than it does bringing in. You know, uh, it spends less money to run the business than it, than it brings in in revenue. So what this is telling me right here is that for every hundred dollars in revenue that 3M brings in, remember revenues is money coming in before any bills are paid. Out of $100 in revenue, after paying all the bills and reinvesting in the business and doing everything you need to do to keep the lights on, 3M has $17.04 left over out of that $100. So that's what this profit margin here tells me. So they are profitable. They spend less money than they bring in. So that's very, very good. Now, keep in mind here with some profit margins, you may invest in some companies or you may look at some companies and their profit margins are very, very low. You know, maybe 1%, 2%, you think, oh, it's positive. That's a good thing. However, it's so close to being negative, I don't know. Some companies, by their very nature, just based on the industry they're in, have naturally low profit margins. Grocery stores are a perfect example of that. I say that a lot in my videos because I have a grocery store in my portfolio. I invest in Kroger. And grocery store profit margins are typically 1% to 3%. So if you do see a very, very low profit margin, while it's still positive, it's just, say, 1%, 2%. Don't necessarily say, uh, you know, I'm not going to invest in that company. Do a little research to find out what a typical profit margin is for that kind of a company based on the industry. Next, I look for is management effectiveness, return on assets, return on equity. These percentages right here, you always want them to be positive. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you see negative percentages here in either one of these, that lets you know that the management eh, maybe is not doing the, the greatest job. Maybe there's some issues they're trying to work out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe there's some issues that they're trying to work out. Um, they're having some difficulties. Whatever, whatever. You don't know exactly exactly what the difficulties are, but they're having some problems. So you know, see negative percentages here. That's usually a done deal for me. I, I can't. I now don't think I've ever invested in a company that had negative return on assets or a negative return on equity. It's just I just don't like it at all. I want management to work out all the kinks and all the bugs before I start investing in a company. So. Right here is how you can tell how effective it gives you an idea of how effective the management is. Because if a man, if the company is not managed well, later on down the road, maybe it's five years, maybe it's ten, maybe it's fifteen years down the road, but eventually the company is going to start having problems, 
if it's not run well. Next thing I look at is the income statement section. And I'm looking, first thing I look at is quarterly revenue growth. Y over Y means year over year, meaning they're comparing the current quarter that these numbers are from and comparing it to the same quarter one year ago. So this is second quarter of 2021. So they're comparing second quarter 2021 to second quarter 2020. And what this is saying is that the revenue for second quarter 2021 is 24.7% higher than second quarter of 2020. So that's an excellent sign that the business is growing. The first thing that has to happen for any business to grow is that the revenue has to grow. You just have to make more money, right? So this is a good sign that the company is growing, that the company is making more money. It's certainly, you know, at least if, you know, when, when comparing just the two quarters, it certainly looks that way. It's a good sign that the company is growing. So this is a, a very good thing. I always like to see positive percentages here. Higher is always better. But even if it's a small percentage, say a, a 5% increase, you know, it's not bad. Um, you know, like I said, higher is always better, but I definitely like to see positive percentages. When I see a negative percentage here on quarterly revenue growth, it's not a done deal for me or it's not a deal breaker for me, uh, especially with a lot of companies in 2020. They were having big problems, uh, obviously, with COVID-19. The economy is being shut down. So a lot of companies were hit really, really hard with uh, with what happened in 2020. So their revenues took a big fall. So they were showing a lot of companies showed a, a negative percentage here for quarterly revenue growth because they were comparing a quarter in 2020 when the economy was shut down and they were barely making any money to the same quarter in 2019 when things were great and the economy was booming. So there was definitely a big disparity there. So that's why you, you saw a lot, of neg a lot of negative percentages. Some companies may still be showing a negative percentage. I don't hold it against them at the moment, um, but I would expect them to turn that negative percentage around relatively quickly, maybe within a couple of, maybe within two quarters or so, it's about six months. Quarterly earnings growth year over year is the next thing I look at right down here. Again, it's year over year, comparing Q2 2021 to Q2 2020. And it's the same that the earnings, which is just another name for profit, the earnings in Q2 2021 are 16.7% higher than quarter two of 2020. Again, excellent. Their earnings, the profit is growing, which is a great, great sign. It's definitely a big key thing that needs to happen if the company is going to grow. So this is an excellent thing. Just as with the quarterly revenue growth, if you see a negative percentage, not the end of the world. You know, in terms of positive percentages, higher is always better. But if you do see that negative, it's not the end of the world. I try not to hold it against the company, but I would expect them to turn around within a couple of quarters or so, especially with what happened in 2020. A lot of businesses were showing negative quarterly earnings growth. All right, next on the balance sheet, I want to know how much debt a company has. You can see that right here. MRQ is just most recent quarter. So in this case, quarter two of 2021. And it's telling me that 3M has $19.12 billion in debt. Now, is that a lot of money? Absolutely. It's a ton of money. But 3M is a massive company. They are multi-billion dollar, absolutely huge company. So they can take on a lot of debt and still be okay and have relatively low risk um, from a lot, you know, even, even if they take on a lot of debt like this is right here. So the way you can tell if this number is big for 3M you can look at the total debt to equity ratio and 131.71 is a very good debt to equity ratio. Ideally, I like to see anything under 100, but you know, slightly over 100 like this is, is not bad at all. Because this number is so low, what this is telling me is that this $19.12 billion is not a lot of money for 3M to take on. There is some, there's always risk in taking on debt, but this level of this amount of debt they have right here, the risk that's associated with it is relatively easily managed and shouldn't be too hard for, for 3M to take on and still maintain and run their, their business without really any problems. So now if this number was higher. I've invested in companies that had debt to equity ratios in 200s and in the 300s. But once I hit the 400s, I start to shy away from the company. It's not a deal breaker for me, but yeah, 400s, it's, it raises the red flag for me a little bit. So um, I've seen companies that have several thousand as, a, as their debt to equity ratio. And that is that is a definitely a deal breaker. That's that's way too high. When a company has, say, uh, five, six, seven, maybe a thousand or higher for debt to equity ratio, that's telling me that the amount of money that you see here, whatever it happens to be, is a lot of money for that particular company to take on, is a lot of, is a lot of debt for that company to take on. So uh, but this is being a low, 
relatively low debt to equity ratio. This $19 billion should be relatively easy to manage for 3M. Next, I come up to is financials. And scrolling down here. Um, by default, Yahoo only gives you the four most recent years. If you get a paid membership, you can look at more years if there are more years available. Hopefully, the company isn't uh, so young there isn't there isn't uh, more than four years. Obviously, 3M's got decades of, of information to look at. But I don't have a paid membership. If you want to get one, by all means, I, I don't. I never felt that I needed one. But when I'm looking here, you can see by default we land on the income statement. All numbers are in thousands, meaning just take whatever number you see, add three zeros to the right, and that's the true number. And we're looking at annual numbers here. You can switch to quarterly if you want to. But I want to look here at the top line, so the total revenue. I want, I want the revenue, so that's the money coming in before paying any bills. I want the revenue to grow every year, ideally. That's what I want. Occasionally, you see some hiccups where maybe it decreases from one year to the next, but overall, I want to see... The, the the revenue growing every single year and you got third about 31.6 billion definitely an increase into 2018 slight decrease into 2019 like i said not a big deal not a huge deal but i do like to see the increases and then we have um, a slight increase going into 2020 so when i see these little decreases like this from 2018 2019 what i like to do is just take the most recent year in this case 2020 and just compare it to the, the earliest year, in this case, 2017, and to see, you know, overall is the trend going up? And you can see, yes, it is. We got 31.6 billion roughly. Now we're at almost 32.2 billion. So overall, the trend is going up. So that's a good thing. Um, all right. So that's what I look at here. Uh, next, I go to cash flow. Again, all numbers are in thousands like before. And we're looking at annual numbers. I'm going to hit expand all. It just shows some exposes some some rows that weren't uh, that were previously hidden so i do is scroll all the way down to the very bottom right here free cash flow and again just like with revenue i want to see the free cash flow increasing every single year as well again you might see a little hiccups or a slight decrease from one year to the next not a big deal but i do like to see that free cash flow increasing and see we have a very minor decrease into 2018 from 2017 very very small about like $5 million small, which is pennies for uh, for 3M. Big increase in 2019, very good increase in 2020. And uh, this, is, this, this column right here is TTM, which is trailing 12 months. So just always a rolling 12 month period. And so far it's looking pretty good, but we'll see how, how they finish off 2021. But these years right here, cash flow is increasing uh, with the exception of right here, this very, very tiny amount of, of decrease, but overall, definitely increasing and that's an excellent thing what reason why is because the dividends that 3m pays comes from the free cash flow so if this free cash flow is increasing every year there's high likelihood it's not a guarantee but it's a very good chance that your dividend payouts will increase with it so that's why i like to see this number increasing again you might see some small hiccups here and there but you know if you do i usually don't don't sweat it too much so long, especially if they rebound the very next year, which is um, ideally what I like to see if they have a decrease at any point um, and this uh, that you see here. So now that we're seeing the free cash flow pretty much going up, what I like to look at next is, uh, I think that's scroll just a little bit. Yep, common stock dividend paid. Uh, hold on, let me come down just a little. So common stock dividend paid, that's right here. And you can see the dividends that are paid out. These numbers are always negative because this is money leaving the company. So never, don't worry about the negative number. But again, um, it's always nice to see the numbers increasing. Or in this, I guess you can say decreasing in this case because you're getting farther into the negatives. But what I like to check here is the payout ratio. So what percentage of the free cash flow did 3M pay out? I usually, do, usually just do the most recent year. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, let's see. Three three eight zero zero zero. Don't make it negative. Leave it as a positive, and I can um, don't add down the extra zeros on the end, and then divide that by the free cash flow here at the bottom. So six. Oops. Bye bye. Six six one two. So out of the money available to pay out, 
3M paid out 51.2% of that in dividends. So their payout ratio is 51.2%. It's pretty good. I like to see a payout ratio ideally 50% or under. So they're slightly above that mark, but not by much. That's, t that's totally fine. The reason why I like to see the lower payout ratios, 50% or under, is because when the company has a little bit of a hiccup from one year to the next, like you saw here, 2017 to 2018, the free cash flow did go down a little bit. When you see that, it's not a big deal because they have a they have such a huge buffer. So, for example, if 3M's free cash flow ended up being, you know, six billion six hundred million, or or we'll say six point five billion dollars, right? So, a pretty sizable decrease in their free cash flow. They still have plenty of room available to be able to increase the dividend because they only paid out half of the previous year. In this case, fifty one percent. So if they do have a decrease into 2021 in their free cash flow, a relatively small decrease, it's okay because they have plenty of cushion available to still be able to increase their dividends. So that's why I like to see the lower payout ratios. Some companies, by their very nature, do have higher payout ratios. Real estate investment trusts are a good example of that. Um, instead of looking at the free cash flow, I look at the adjusted funds for operate adjusted funds of operation. Yeah, AFFO, adjusted funds for operation. Um and then what percentage of that, of the AFFO, are they paying out in dividends? So uh, so the same idea, you're just looking at AFFO, adjusted funds from operation, as opposed to the free cash flow. So that's a different situation. Um, so some companies do have the higher, naturally higher payout ratios. Real estate investment trusts are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head. But in this case, uh, 3M having a 51% payout ratio, I think is pretty good. I wouldn't mind them to decrease it a little bit, maybe couple of percent, but not a big deal at all. All right, so the final thing I look at here on this page is I look at this little chart that you always see. And the green line is revenue. The very, very small blue lines are the uh, are the earnings or the profit. And what I like to see really is each line increasing every single year, each bar, excuse me, increasing every single year. Um, we already saw what the revenue was back on the income statement. We saw that earlier in the video. So we know that there was an increase decrease and then a slight increase again overall upward trend very small overall upward trend but there is an overall upward trend and then uh, with the earnings there was a good increase in earnings into 2018 decreased into 2019 pretty yeah, decent size decrease into 2019 um, and then uh, they had a pretty good rebound in 2020 which is pretty impressive considering what happened in 2020 um, but 3m seem to be relatively unfazed by coronavirus and you know the lock you know, economies being shut down overall definitely an upward trend from 2017 to 2020 and their earnings and in their revenue so that's a good thing one thing i do have to note is that you're, you're kind of seeing the revenue plateau right there, there's a very small upward trend from 2017 to 2020 however it's relatively flat right so one thing you do have to consider with 3M because they're such a huge company, right? Massive. You're looking at these these revenue numbers. You're, you're talking about $32 billion each year. How much more could 3M actually grow, right? It, as the companies get larger, one thing they have, the one difficulty they usually run into is being able to continue to grow because they have to do so much more in order to really affect a lot of change and really show, you know, some, some big changes in the revenue and in the earnings. So how much more could they really grow? That might be a reason why here you're seeing a plateau in the revenue and kind of a plateau in the earnings as well. So that, that could explain why you're seeing that, seeing good, steady, progressive, you know, uh, significant growth from one year to the next. Um, but that's just a guess on my part. Uh, that's something to you know think of when you're, when you're doing this uh, analysis like this. All right, so the next I go to is E-Trade. Now, E-Trade is my broker. That's who I use. You don't have to use E-Trade. You can use anybody you want. If you like what I'm doing here, but you use Weevil or Scott Trade or Robinhood or any of those other apps, Ameritrade, um, you can still come to E-Trade and do what I'm about to show you if you can't find the same information on your online broker's page. But um, you can see here I'm not logged into my account, so you can do what I'm about to do without an account. Um, let's see, come here, you can go to fundamentals and there's three areas I like to look at here. So first is financial strength. I like to read these little paragraphs here. 3M's debt to equity ratio indicates it has been more aggressive with using debt to finance growth than 78% of its peers in the consumer goods conglomerates industry. 
uh, not a huge deal to me. I'm, I'm really not too concerned about it because you know, they're low debt to equity ratio. So I, I really wouldn't sweat it too much. Um, and I've actually seen a lot of companies I've done analysis for on this channel and in my own portfolio. I do see that a lot of companies are more aggressive than a lot of their peers with using debt. I'm not sure. Maybe that has something to do with the really very low interest rates. So companies are really taking advantage of that right now and kind of piling on the, not the free debt, but the very, very cheap debt to um, this to help finance growth. So, um, but like I said, low debt to equity ratio, so I wouldn't sweat it too much. Profitability. 3M's gross margin is more than 98% of other companies in the consumer goods conglomerate industry, which means it has more cash to spend on business operations as compared to its peers. Beautiful. They're almost top of the line there. Uh, more cash to spend on business operations is never bad. As indicated by the operating margin, 3M controls its costs and expenses better than 96% of its peers. Beautiful. I mean, they're almost number one in their industry with controlling their costs. I think that's really a good testament to how well the management is doing and also really just overall all the employees because yeah sure the management comes up with the game plan but the employees have to go out there and execute on that plan and it really seems like they are you know just judging by the, the operating margin it's a good good indication that they are next i come to management effectiveness and the return on equity for 3m shows that it is able to reinvest its earnings more efficiently than 92 percent of its competitors in the consumer goods conglomerates industry um, again really showing that that management knows what they're doing. They're almost number one with regards to that, at least compared to their peers, industry peers. So the management really knows what they're doing. Fantastic. Uh, I really like to see that. Can't go wrong there. All right. That is the final thing that I look at with regards to a company. And one more thing here. Actually, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, based on everything that I see in this video, would I invest in 3M? Yes, I would invest in 3M. I think they're a great company. They, um, they're profitable. They've been around a really long time. They got a great track record, great dividend history. They're increasing their dividends at a very good pace, especially relative to inflation. They're they're blowing inflation away by a mile. They uh, seem to be managed well. Their debt to equity ratio is, is definitely manageable, very manageable. So I wouldn't worry about all the debt that they have. Overall, they seem like a great company. Would I invest in them at $187.89? Is that a good uh, good share price. If they're overvalued, if a company is overvalued, I would say, yeah, I'll invest in a company, but I'm going to wait for the share price to come down a little bit. How long it takes for the share price to come down is anyone's guess, but I'm going to wait for the share price to come down before I invest. Sometimes I say that when I'm getting ready to invest in a company, if I'm considering an investment. So 3M is awesome, but are they too expensive at this current share price right here? Let's take a look. So what I do, I've already went ahead and done it. But I go back to June 1st, 2007, and I picked this date. When I, once I started using, you know, doing this method here to determine a fair share price, I just picked June 1st, 2007. I, I just wanted a lot of data points. I wanted to go back a decent amount of years. So I go back to June 1st, 2007, and I figure out what the yearly dividend was on that day. It turned out to be $1.92. And I look at what the closing share price was for that day. Turned out to be $86.79, and that gave me the dividend yield of 2.21%. So you can see there how I figure out the dividend yield. And then I do that same thing for January 1st, 2008, June 1st, 2008, January 1st, 2009, all the way down. June 1st, January 1st, all the way down to June 1st, 2021. Once January 1st, 2022 comes on the line, comes up, then I'll add, I'll add a row down here at the bottom. Now I have all these dividend yields, so I have all these different data points. Now I, I get an average. Originally, when I first started doing this, there was no June 1st, 2021. We hadn't gotten there yet. It was, this is earlier in the year. So I actually was doing an average from June 1st, 2007 to January 1st, 2021. But now that January, um, or excuse me, June 1st, 2021 is available, I do a rolling average. So I still like to know what June 1st, 2007 was, what the dividend yield was, but I don't include it in the average anymore because I'm doing a rolling average. So you can see there, I'm going all the way down to June 1st, 2021, and I'm starting at January 1st, 2008 for the average. So then that's how I get, I get the average dividend yield from there. And then 
I, I like to know what the high is and what the low. It makes no difference with regards to determining the fair share price, but I just like to know what it is. It's a good information to have. So if I get the fair share price, and then I come over here, I'll unveil this. And I'd look at I'd say, all right, this is the current share price, $187.89. To get a fair share price, I take, you can see it right here, I take the current annual dividend, which happens to be $5.92, and then divide that by the average yield you get here in cell E2. So point in this case, I have to have to divide it by 0 0.027. And then from there, I can get a fair share price of $219.26, which comes out to be just over 14% undervalued. So I think the current share price of $187.89 is about 14% undervalued. So that's how I determine what a fair share price is. So I already said, yes, I would invest in 3M. I think they're an amazing company. And not only that, I think you're getting their shares at a great price. I think you're getting it at a 14% discount relative to really what they should be trading at. So um, you're getting a great company at an amazing price. So absolutely, I would invest in 3M. So that's all I got for everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, comments, definitely leave all that down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear from everyone and hear what you have to say. 